Friends, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We welcome you to worship on this Easter morning, 2020. Uh, the, the Lord be with you and all who are with you as you gather with us to worship uh, this day from near and from far. Um, we are going to be right up front with you on, on our... Uh, on our presentation today and make sure that you know that um, <clears throat> we are not professionals at this and uh, no one is ever going to accuse us of, of being Universal Studios around here. And if you happen to be here for um, Good Friday or was it Monday, Thursday? It was Good Friday, you'll know that we are never going to be confused with Universal Studios. Um, we're doing our very best to carry on what it means to be part of the church family here at First Presbyterian Church of Holt and where we use a tagline of real faith, living hope. And as I said, you know, you're going to probably witness some reality today. Um, we are not uh, going to claim that we're going to go through this without any mistakes. Um, in fact, we make a lot of them, so your, your grace is requested, and please um, let us, and please know that we appreciate your understanding and your patience with us in that regard. But we make those mistakes, putting, both, putting forth our very best effort in order to proclaim our faith because we believe that the one whom we profess as Lord and Savior, our, our risen Christ, we believe that he is worth every bit of the effort and every bit of the mistake we make along the way. So it's our hope that by the grace of God, through what we share together in our act of worship today, that we might together witness to the living hope that we know in the Easter story. Real faith living hope. We're glad that you're here. And as part of being here in this virtual world, we're asking everybody to sign in, if you would please, on the chat on the side of the YouTube uh, broadcast. And, you know, we've been tracking this all the way through, and the highest number of um, People logged in to see the live stream at one, any one given time was 136. We've been growing every single week as we go. Oh my, okay, so I just got word from Emery that we already broke that record. I was going to put a challenge out there. Make sure that you sign in. But I am going to put a challenge out there. If you would sign in and say hello to everyone there, but list how many people that you are worshiping with on your screen that's being broadcast. Let us know and we'll try to keep track of that as well because it is great to know how much um, we are sharing with our brothers and sisters in faith all across cyberspace. So um, the other thing I'm going to ask of you as you are um, in this time of sheltering in place um, and this time when we're kind of worshiping um, apart, but trying our very best to be worshiping together. As we prepare for a future service, I'm going to ask that if you could please be attentive to the joy that is around you, even in the midst of your sheltering. So look for either uh, something that inspires joy within you or Look, uh, see if you might be able to capture even an expression of joy. Um, and then in whatever form that might be, uh, send that off to us, and we are going to try to incorporate that into an upcoming service. So there's a little bit of homework for you as we, um, as we move towards the future together. Now, as far as homework goes, hopefully you've had a chance to to be um, uh, attentive to the shelter-in-place scavenger hunt so that you're ready to go for our worship this morning. And so I'm going to encourage you to light your Christ candle um, as you have it before you. I um, encourage you to make sure that your communion elements are there and with you. 
And then also, um, if you've got your one great hour of sharing fish banks or whatever it is that you're receiving your offering um, throughout this time that we have, make sure you've got that with you today, as today is our official one great hour of sharing offering reception day. And we'll receive that whenever we honor it today, um, but we'll be receiving it whenever you get a chance to uh, bring that our way. Um, so there is also on the website all of the, of the vital links that you need in order to participate and, and um, engage in our worship service this morning. And um, on, um, included in there is the chanter. And um, uh, listed in the chanter, of course, are our many prayer concerns that we hold as we have been making our way through this time apart from one another. So please make sure you download and check those out um, and hold on to those folks as we move through our time of worship today and then also into this coming week as well. You're also going to see your printed order of worship there uh, as a vital link also. So if you would print that off and you're ready then to follow and join in our worship together, truly as an act of the entire people. And none of this could happen, none of this could happen without some amazing contributions from some really talented and amazing people. Um, so you will see in your printed order of worship a list of folks that we want to thank and um, express gratitude uh, for all that they have done to help enhance and to vitalize our worship together this morning. I do want to do a special uh, point, uh, shout out to, uh, to Mitchell Ethan, who put together, who produced, gathered up the talent and produced our closing hymn for today, which is crown him with many crowns, but is done by a virtual choir of all things. He's got folks from across the country, from California to New York. He's got Canadian. He's and 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 Madagascar represented as well. Um, so you are in for an amazing treat when you see um, how the the faithful from across the globe have come and we've gathered uh, to gather at Christ's table and celebrate the Easter story. And. Last but not least, I also want to do a great big thank you to Robert Johnson, who is our technical guru operating from afar and providing support for us. And then to my, my wife, my son, and my well, son Emery, and daughter Sophie, um, who have sat through hours and hours and hours of preparation and um, are here today to help make this all possible. And doing that, in a safe and healthy way. So friends, I believe that we are ready to step into our worship together and let's do so remembering and proclaiming loud and long that he is risen. He is risen indeed.
Friends, please join me in our call to worship this morning. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast, steadfast love endures, endures forever. forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. God, God is, is my salvation. salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I, I shall not, not die, but, but I shall live and recount, recount the deeds of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice and be glad in it. In it. to the joyful reality that every morning is Easter morning, overflowing with renewal and redemption. But friends, if we're honest with ourselves, we do not always embrace the Alleluia message, the Easter message. And as we seek to find the full meaning of this day, let us confess our sin together. God of mystery, we confess that faith doesn't come easy every Easter. 
when, when we face loss in our lives, when, when the chaos around us and within us moves to fever pitch, we can lose our, our grip on the promise we know in Christ's resurrection. Sorrows can weigh us down. Uncertainty makes anxiety rise. Challenges feel like a stone too heavy to roll away. Forgive us, O oh God, and let the joy of this day assure us that the power of your love will never let us go. Amen. The shroud is gone, and in its place, new life. Take into your heart this Easter message. There is no mistake, no sin too large, that this new life cannot overcome it. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ we, we are forgiven. forgiven. Aliens and foreigners no more. Christ has broken down the dividing wall between us. We are sisters, brothers, members of the God's household. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. So we have a very special children's sermon this morning. Uh, this Holy Week has been a mixture of um, plans that we normally do, traditions that we wanted to uphold, and then COVID-19 kind of got in the way, and we've been having this mixture of tradition and new things. But one of the things that we had planned before all of this started was for Libby Jones, our church school organizer, to do an Easter trail mix. And so Libby has graciously uh, continued to do this children's sermon. She recorded herself this week and has sent it in. And so if you have your trail mix supply ready, uh, you have it nearby, and Libby's going to walk you through the meaning uh, behind each ingredient in the trail mix. Hi, everyone. Happy Easter. So I am going to be building the Easter trail mix today. So feel free to um, gather supplies and build your own trail mix along with me or just enjoy the story from home. And we are going to start with a verse from Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. 
Um, and so it says, when, when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all for our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set this aside, nailing it to the cross. And so we are going to build our cross with pretzel sticks. And whenever we see this cross, we are reminded that Jesus died for our sins. And because of that, we are forgiven. So we are going to add some pretzel sticks to our trail mix. Our next verse comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. It says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of our grace. And to stand for his blood, we are going to use some raisins. And another reminder of the forgiveness of our sins um, can be found through communion, which we take at church. And when we take communion, we know that Jesus broke his body and shed his blood for us. So instead of our normal communion of um, grape juice or wine, we are going to add some raisins to our family. Our next Bible verse comes from Luke chapter 24, verse 2. And that says, On the first day of the week, early at dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find a body. So when Jesus died for us on the cross, we know that they put his body in a tomb. But when people came back to visit Jesus in the tomb, they had noticed that the stone had rolled away and they did not find his body because he had risen. So for the stone, we are going to use some Ritz crackers. So we're going to add those to our trail mix. The next Bible verse comes from Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Um, so in this Bible verse, Jesus calls his first disciples, and the Bible says, As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. And they, he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. So Jesus asks us to be fishers of men and what that means is to let everyone know about your faith and how much Jesus loves them. So for our trail mix we are going to add some goldfish to remind us that we are fishers of men. The next thing we're going to add is our or the next verse we're going to talk about it comes from 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. And that says, if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and wash us clean from all of our unrighteousness. And we know that Jesus washes away all of our sins and cleanses us. So for that, we are going to use white mini marshmallows and add that to our trail mix. And then the last Bible verse that we are going to look at comes from Psalms. Uh, Psalm 34, verse 8, and it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. So the last thing we're going to add to our trail mix is something sweet, and it's going to be some M&Ms. And then hopefully you wash your hands before you started making your trail mix, but you're going to mix it all together. And you'll have a lot to share with everyone so you can remind them of what everything stands for in your Easter trail mix. I hope you all have a wonderful Easter. Um, I miss you all and I hope you're staying safe.
As we prepare for our time with the Word today, I'm going to probably answer a question that's been going in your head as you've looked over your shelter-in-place scavenger hunt, and you've been wondering, what are those permanent markers for? Well, last week, as the crowds waved their palms and cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Scripture tells us that some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Well, today, Easter, is the day of transformation and new life. Today's the day that even the rocks are shouting out. And you get to help. So using those permanent markers and the rock from your shelter-in-place scavenger hunt, that same rock that we used on Friday to symbolize the sealing of Christ's tomb, your challenge is now to transform that symbol of death into a proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ. So what's the message that our world needs to hear today? What's the Easter word that needs to be seen and lived in our, da- in our time and in our day? Leave it on the rock, and then go leave that rock somewhere out in the world. And of course, if you uh, get a chance to take a picture of it before you place it, please do so and shoot that our way so we can then share it with everybody here as well. So as we prepare to hear God's word read and proclaimed, I ask that you join me in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Holy God of Easter truth, We give you thanks for this morning where we get to step into the new life that you have promised to us in Jesus Christ. It is our prayer that as we hear the story, once again, we are reminded that every morning is your Easter morning. And every day we get to step in to that resurrection life. We pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you might work through these words this day. That the word made flesh might be proclaimed. And that we might be able to faithfully live the resurrection life following in his way wherever you may lead us. And may it be lived bravely, courageously, and lavishly on a world that is crying out for your hallelujahs. For this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, and we are going to be reading the first and first through the tenth verses of the twenty-eighth chapter. Listen for God's word for you this day. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the, but the, angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know what you are looking for, Jesus 
who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It was a bright and sunny, blue sky, puffy cloud morning. Thanks be to God. Sorry for that interruption there, folks. Remember what I said about not being Universal Studios? <laughs> All right. So it was a bright and sunny blue sky puffy cloud morning in Allen Park, Michigan. It was a big day in the Miller household. The very first day of preschool for our eldest son, Pearson. Now his preschool was located upstairs at the church where I served which was right across the alley from the manse where we lived. And after proudly witnessing him launch his scholastic career, I stopped in the church office and said hello to the office volunteer. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if she's watching or not, but she's the kind of person who loves to be in the know and loves to tell you about it even the inconsequential stuff. So when she said, did you hear a plane crashed into a building in New York City? I remember responding with the non-committal, huh, and thinking, well, you know, if it even really happened, it must have been some small private plane with some sort of equipment problem or something. I walked home, turned on the TV, and was watching when that second plane slammed into the Twin Towers. Where were you when the planes hit the World Trade Center on September 11? I remember it like it was yesterday because of the tragedy itself, but also because of everything that happened afterwards. It was a watershed moment that has changed and shaped the character of our nation as well as the people in it from that day forward. Now, for the younger generation, where were you when you first saw the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas come across your screens? Or for the older generation, where were you when President Kennedy was assassinated? Now, hopefully given that you 
really have nowhere else to go, you'll be able to spend some of the time on this Easter Sunday to connect with loved ones, whether Zooming a video conference, chatting on Facebook, or, or going completely old school and just calling on the phone. I encourage you to spend a little time with each other talking about the where were you moments of your lives. There is so much to learn in the stories that are shared. The disciples, you know, I'm not so sure they want to be sharing the where were you on that first Easter morning story because it would be a really short conversation. Not unlike trying to talk to a teenager. Where were you on that first Easter morning? Uh, I was sleeping. In Matthew's telling of the story, the disciples were nowhere to be found in the fame. But it was the women who stepped into the picture. They were present. It's probably better to say they were still present. Remember, these were the same women who, when Jesus was crucified, were, quote, looking from a distance, unquote. I don't know about you, but with all our talk of social distancing, that phrase in the passion story has taken on a whole new level of meaning for me this year. They were there, doing what they could, bravely standing vigil in the midst of the ugliness. They were there to be with Jesus as he endured such inexplicable, undeserved suffering. They were there to hear his desperate cries. They were there to watch the life in his body wane and finally yield. They were there to do what they could. Following in the way of the one they knew as Emmanuel, God with us, they were there. They were present. And so it isn't surprising that with the Sabbath over, it was the women who went to the grave to continue their mourning. And what a morning it was. Tremors underfoot and a visitor from above who had all the looks of a severe warning on Storm Tracker 6. But the angel said, do not be afraid. Look, see, it's empty. He isn't here. He's been raised. Go, go and spread the news. Now, what the angel didn't say, but what the women had to have sensed was that from that moment on, everything changed. Life and love, meaning and purpose, justice and peace, reconciliation and redemption, they all looked different now, having moved from that category of possibility to truth. And if that wasn't enough, as the women run then to go share the story, they're greeted by none other than Jesus himself. And he says the exact same thing. Do not be afraid. Only Jesus is saying more than don't be afraid of the earthquake. earthquake. He's saying more than don't be afraid of the heavenly being with supernatural strength. And he's saying so much more than don't be afraid of your beloved, that your beloved's body is gone. Jesus is saying, don't be 
afraid. In his resurrection from the dead on that first Easter morning, Jesus proclaims two things. First, my love is more powerful than the ravages of violence, betrayal, greed, apathy, bitterness, vengeance, selfishness, and even disease. And second, my love is for you. And that, my friends, is the eternal hope that informs our hope with which we live in this day and in this time. And hope makes a difference. For the healthcare worker who's surrounded by death and a merciless killer stayed away from their family to protect them, risked their life for the strangers that they've treated, worked shift after shift beyond the threshold of exhaustion, and now must suit up for another day. Hope makes a difference. For the despondent worker who has had a job all their life, often two at a time, but now suddenly finds themselves unemployed and unsure, and unsure about how they're going to support their family, hope makes a difference. And for the homeless person who has never been able to keep a job, and now finds themselves even more ostracized and more separated from the assistance that they need, hope makes a difference. And for the child who struggles to understand the changes that are shaking her foundations, the absence of friends and teachers, the dearth of human touch, all the talk of, of death just swirling around her, hope makes a difference. Hope makes a difference for the family member of a dying COVID-19 patient whose only connection to their loved ones is a chaplain standing faithfully at the ICU window describing the situation as he tries to comfort them on his cell phone. Hope makes a difference. So take a long look around you. Take a deep look within you so that in the future, when you are asked, where were you on that Easter morning of the pandemic? You'll be able to answer not just in physical terms, but in spiritual ones as well. Were you scratching and clawing through a desert of scarcity? Or were you able to plunge into the well of your faith in the steadfast providence of God, drinking in and sloshing everywhere the spirit of abundance that comes with it? Were you wound up in the heightened anxiety of those whose fear goes deeper than justifiable concerns over the virus and instead rises up from a place of no, not knowing who they really are? Or were you able to live a semblance of the patient, grace-filled presence of the one who already gave everything for the redemption you know that you so desperately need. How will you answer the question, where were you in the COVID-19 pandemic? Now don't get me wrong. It's not because anything I've said here has been remarkably memorable. It's because of everything that we've experienced in these weeks leading up to today and all that is certain to follow in the days to come that of all the Easter's in your lifetime, this is one that you will remember where you were. But let me say this. As sure as we worship together this day, you're going to be able to look back on this time and to know that you were doing your part. Because, my friends, in your Easter worship, 
You are proclaiming hope. Powerful, life-changing hope. And that makes a difference. So proclaim the hope. In all that you do, proclaim the hope. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And let all God's people say, Amen. are an Easter people called to carry the hope of our Savior Jesus Christ into the world. The need is now. And one of the ways that we respond to this need as Presbyterians is through our gifts to the one great hour of sharing. Let us offer the gifts of our life and labor to the Lord. I'm gonna build God's house. Just need the right stuff. Joyce, g give me your card so I can build God's house. Hey, can I help? Hey, Bill, give me your card so I can build God's house. Mara, give me your card. Okay, folks, let's do this. Really? Ah, that's the only way we can do it. That's the only way I know how to do it. All right. Cool. Ah, what am I missing? 
Ming! Oh. What do you say we build God's house together? I like that. Let's build God's house together. Angela, let's build God's house together. Valerie, let's build God's house together. Amen, brother, let's do it. Let's build God's house together. Let's do it. Let's build God's house together. <laughs> Let's build God's house together. Let's build God's house together. Let's build God's house together. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from north and from south, from east and from west, to sit at table in the kingdom of our Lord. This is the Lord's table. And our Savior invites all those who trust in him to come and to share the feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. At your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. Your hand formed us from the dust of the earth and set us among all your creatures to love and serve you. When we were unfaithful to you, you kept faith with us. Your love remained steadfast. When we were slaves in Egypt, you broke the bonds of our oppression, brought us through the seed of freedom, and made a covenant to be our God. By a pillar of fire, you led us through the desert to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. You spoke of love and justice in the prophets, and in the word made flesh you lived among us, manifesting your glory. He died that we might live, and is risen to raise us to new life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name.
You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to save us. He came with healing in his touch and was wounded for our sins. He came with mercy in his voice and was mocked as one despised. He came with peace in his heart and met with violence and death. By your power, he broke free from the prison of the tomb, and at his command, the gates of hell were opened. The one who is dead now lives. The one who humbled himself is raised to rule over all creation, the Lamb upon the throne. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. And in that spirit, O oh God, we lift to you now the prayers that fill our hearts this Easter morning. God of compassion, as we lift these prayers and rededicate our lives to you in the celebration of this sacrament, we pray that in your wisdom and by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would use us to bring about your will here on earth as we follow in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, who when he was here with us, taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took the bread, and after he had blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. Amen. 
In a similar manner, after dinner, he took the cup and poured out the wine and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, the everlasting covenant that has been poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again in glory. So friends, these are the gifts of God and they are for the people of God. Using the elements that are before you, let us eat, let us drink, let us celebrate together. And the body of Christ, broken for you. The body of Christ, broken for you. And the cup of the new covenant. Cup of the new covenant. Amen. Please join us in our prayer following communion. God, God of grace, grace having, having renewed, renewed us at your table with, with the bread, bread of life and the cup of salvation, send, send us out in Easter joy to proclaim the empty tomb and live the risen life today, carrying the hope of your Son, Jesus Christ, to the world. In, In his, his beloved, beloved name, name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen, amen, and amen. Um, thanks be to God for all who have contributed uh, to our service today um, and with that wonderful exclamation point at the, as we come to the close. Um, there were other folks, too, that, got, uh, that I failed to get listed in our gratitude section um, and of all of our thank yous. As we were sharing in our Eucharistic prayer, you heard some very familiar voices, uh, but just in case you didn't figure out who, uh, what name went to which voice, um, we had reading for us today, Etela, Emily and Riley Guzzo, Mark Polzine, Mary Lee Halton, and Zach Fisher. So thank you to them as well. And we hope that you'll be able to, to hang around, linger a little bit before you head off to your Easter festivities and Easter meal. Um, we're going to have a church family check-in on the Zoom, which you can find the link for uh, at, the, at our website. Um, and we hope to see you there immediately following the postlude. But now for your charge, remember those words from Psalm, from Psalm 40, 46. God is our refuge and our strength and our very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. We find ourselves in a time of deep trouble. So friends, the world needs you. Go in peace. Go boldly to share the hope of the risen Christ with the world. And as you do, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each and every single one of us, both now and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen.